Log footage is just a starting point with lots of possibilities and it needs that finishing touch to really stand out. In today's video, I'll walk you through some advanced color grading techniques that will help you turn your videos into something visually captivating. And if you are looking for a proper color grading training, join my course, Mastering Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve. This course will walk you through the primary, secondary and creative color grading techniques, equipping you with the skills to take your footage to a professional level. And now let's move to today's video. And this is our clip for today. It comes from ArtGrid. It has been shot with Blackmagic camera and as usual, I am working in DaVinci Color Managed Environment. So it's already converted to Rec. 709. This is my before and after. And these are my color management settings. And as a timeline color space, I very often use DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate as this is the widest color space. And if you want to learn more about color management and if you want to know exactly how to convert your clips, please join my course. And now, as you can see, I've also already prepared the note tree for today, but I will obviously walk you through it step by step. So let's start from the primary color correction. And today I will perform all of my primary adjustments on this one note, but it's also very common to adjust the balance contrast or the exposure on separate notes. If you want to see different types of notes, feel free to watch my other tutorials. But here, let's just start from adjusting the exposure with the primary wheels. So I will start to push my gain up. Then let's push the gamma down. And then I'll actually increase the contrast here with the contrast slider. Okay. And now let's go to our HDR wheels as I am still not happy with the contrast. It's not enough. And with the HDR wheels, we can sculpt the image more precisely. And again, if you want to learn more about the HDR wheels, join my course. There's a few great lessons about it. So here let's preview the shadow region and I will decrease the exposure of it a little bit. Then I'll preview my light region and I'll increase the exposure of it. And this is my before and after. And now we'll work a bit differently than usual as I want to show you how you can use new film look creator in DaVinci Resolve. So I'll move straight to my look node over here and I'll grab my film look creator from the effects tab. And this is our default result, but I don't want it. I actually want a very subtle look. So I will use clean slate. And Clean Slate is only available in the latest update of DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 19. So make sure that you have it. And this option allows us to build the look from the scratch. So here under the film look, I will push the slider to the right, to the maximum, to enable my film looks. And then here we can pick the core look. So the first one is cinematic, but we also have here Rochester, Akasaka, Elated, and Vintage look to choose from. So feel free to use any of them as your base. But I'll go back to the cinematic. And this is our before and after. It just warms up a bit our clip. And now let's move back to the Glow One node. And here I will show you how to use Glow to create a deep filmic contrast. And as you can see, I've already created here a matte. If you want to know more about mats, watch my previous two videos where I was also using them. But just to refresh that knowledge quickly, I just right clicked on the glow node and I went down to add mat and then I've chosen our clip's name. And this way we've created the mat that separates the highlights and the shadows and makes the effects affect only the areas of the clip that are of a high luminosity. So let's grab the glow effect from the effects tab. And let's drop it onto our node. And now I'll go down to the composite mode and I will change it to soft light. And now the clip became dark. So let's go up to shine threshold and let's move it to the left to the max. Okay. And now I'll also increase the spread to the max. And then I'll decrease the opacity of the effect down to around 0.197. And this is my before and after. 
And now let's move straight to our second glow. And here we will apply the default glow onto our clip. So here I will leave the composite mode set as a default to add. And then let's just again decrease the shine threshold over here. Like this. And this is our before and after. So let's just also scroll through the clip and let's see how it looks. I love it so far. This is before and after. So now let's zoom into the model's face and I want to work on her skin texture a bit. I want to add some softness to it to make it look more perfect. So I'll move to my softness node over here and now I'll grab the qualifier and I will select the skin and let's also turn the highlight mode on. And now let's zoom out again to be able to see better the selection. And I'll use my sliders over here to improve the selection. And now I'll denoise it a bit over here. And also as I want better isolation, I will grab the power window. I will place it on the model's face. And I will track it. All right, so let's turn the highlight mode off. And now let's move to our primaries. Then let's turn off our power window over here. And let's zoom in again. And now I will simply decrease midtones details over here. And this is before and after. The skin looks much softer now. So let's move to the node labeled as skin tones. And here I will show you a different way of qualifying colors in Resolve. So instead of using the qualifier manually, we can go over here to color, then presets. And in this case, as we want to select skin tones, let's pick six vector yellow. So now let's turn on the highlight mode again. And let's see. Well, it needs some improvement, so let's go to the sliders in our qualifier and let's improve the selection. Basically, I want to have the skin selected here. Okay, and I will denoise the selection as well. And now let's turn off the highlight mode. And let's move back to the primaries. And I will use my gamma wheel to add more saturation in the midtones. Okay, and this is before and after. So now let's scroll through the clip to see how it plays. Perfect. Now we'll work on the face a little bit more. So let's move to the highlights node over here and let's grab the power window again. Now let's place it on the model's face and let's track it. And now we will use the qualifier again. So let's turn the highlight mode on. And this time let's just use the luminance slider. So I will soften it a bit. And I will basically push it to the right in order to select only the brightest parts of the face. And let's scroll through it. And now we can turn the highlight mode off. And I will go back to the primaries. And here I will use the gamma master wheel. I will push it up to increase the brightness in the selected region. Okay, and this is before and after. Perfect. By doing this, we have brought more attention to the model's face. And now let's move to the last step. Let's move to the look adjustment node at the very end. Well, I think that I want to bring up a bit the color of the car. So I'll use the color warper. And by clicking over here, we can expand it if we want to, and we can move it around. And I'll increase the number of points over here to eight to be more precise. And then when I hover with my mouse over the green in the clip, I can also see it on my color warper. So then I will just grab and move this point further from the center to add more saturation to green. Perfect. And let's scroll through the clip. This is before and after. But now I can see that the warper also affected a bit the whiteness of the top over here. 
So to fix it, I will go back to the primaries and I will push my gamma towards the opposite direction of the green, like this, just a little bit. And now let's watch the final result. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.